This is a new thing for me. I barely know how to use a cell phone. But anyway, we want to offer a message that I have an opportunity via this uh, YouTube production uh, of hoping and praying for everyone uh, in all of the necessary ways that we need prayer for, as well as those across the world and within our own local area, so victimized uh, by the virus, but also uh, a recognition for all those who are caring for them, as well as our families and friends who certainly live with anxiousness in this difficult time. So uh, we certainly miss uh, seeing y'all at church, and uh, I hope that uh, you know of our prayers and affection. I'm going to say this, uh, you know, this weekend, if you were able to come to Mass, uh, you would have heard a beautiful story about uh, a man that was born blind. Now, I'm going to give you his, uh, the ninth chapter of John's Gospel, verse 1 to 41. Now, that's the long form, but anyway, <laughs> you can read the long form because dropping out of some of those other verses, you know, you're not trying to get out of mass early so because you're at home looking at this. So it's a beautiful drama that John writes. But at the very beginning, uh, Jesus and his disciples encounter a blind man and the disciples say, Lord, whose sin was it? The blind man's or his parents? And it's important for us to hear Jesus' answer, neither, neither his own or his parents, but to let the glory of God shine forth. In times like this, oftentimes our minds can play some tricks with us about, you know, I run into this in so many different ways. When hurricanes strike, when earthquakes strike, and even now, sometimes uh, you, you hear so-called religious people saying, well, this is God's condemnation. And um, honestly, that's, uh, in my opinion, quite offensive when Jesus is actually responding to a common belief that this poor man born blind, uh, that in some kind of way, God's punishing him with blindness. And Jesus says, neither with thinking like that. We have so many thought disorders. So we have to be careful of uh, trying to imply that uh, God's going around sending viruses out. I'm pretty sure that he could do what God wants to do. And the fact of the matter is we are human beings. We are vulnerable. We get sick of uh, many different types of diseases. And the fact of the matter is, whether it be any of those issues, uh, the biblical definition of God is that God is love. And so I'm pretty sure that God, who is love, cannot desire <clears throat> the uh, sickness and death, even though it's part of our na uh, natural um, born, being born, living and dying, regardless of the circumstances. And so the important message, I think, in this gospel is that Jesus is, uh, and John, who's writing the gospel, is taking the fact that the light of the world is the person of Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. Now, we have the opportunity to try to see the world and be a part of the world through the light of Christ. Um, all of us, when we were baptized, were given a baptismal candle and celebrated that Jesus is the light of the world. And so we speak about illumination. Right now is a good opportunity to see what really illuminates how we are wired, how uh, we have, uh, how, how we think, and so on. So, for example, uh, even though uh, masses have been suspended, maybe it might be a good thing to realize that, uh, can I see things differently? Do I see that uh, I am, all of us are the body of Christ. So even though we're missing the body and blood of Christ in mass, now let's see the body of Christ in terms of our community and the faithful and all of the daughters and sons of God. 
it's important for us to kind of stretch uh, the fact that God is not just present in church, but God is present in human life. And how can I start seeing the body of Christ, watching the blind spots, because you see this man born blind, was blind, but he gradually came to sight. And then he gradually came to know Jesus. At first he said, you know, um, well, who, who cured you to someone? Well, the, that man they called Jesus didn't even know him. And then when he was interrogated by the religious authorities about how did it happen? He said, he must be a prophet. And next thing you know, he's uh, encountering Jesus and he realizes when Jesus says, I am the light of the world, you're talking to him. And he says, what I do believe. So he came to greater sight, insight, and the people who thought they saw actually became more blind. So one of the blind spots we want to work with is how can we see life, see others, see even, for example, uh, our concerns and our anxiousness at this time, uh, especially for those who have been victimized by the, the virus. How often have we actually not seen other vulnerable people uh, in a greater light? Because they also are daughters and sons of God. And our responsibility is to have some insight into God's presence there. And are we seeing it there? Or do we just see them as problems in our own lives? And so, once again, uh, during these um, holy days of Lent, um, regardless of the fact that we can be in church and not in church, the fact is, um, can we sit with the fact that Jesus is the light, not just of the world, but if he's the light of our world, how are we seeing the world through the illumination of Jesus Christ? And does that change things for us?